Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Open Thought Game Channel. I'm AJ Gels. Guys, we are back once more with the weekly show. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, I've spent my day so far kind of being a lazy asshole. I uh, wasn't get, I didn't get any sleep uh, the night previously. I had to pull an all-nighter. So, uh, you know, kind of slept in either way, all ready to read the news. If you're new to this show, basically what I do is uh, I sit here, I take news from uh, around the stuff... Uh, around the web, there we go, that's the word for it, uh, about gaming news, and I just sit here, I read some articles, I talk about it, we're going to watch uh, a really great trailer, but I have that saved for the end. Uh, if you want to skip any articles or skip to anything, you can find links to every article as well as a timestamp of uh, just about within seconds of when I start talking about uh, certain things down in the description below. And... Other than that, uh, we're gonna hop into the show. But real quick, I do want I do want to uh, make a quick shout out. I went out to see this movie yesterday, the uh, the sequel to The Kingsman, The Kingsman Golden Circle. Holy shit, that was a good movie. Like I mean, like I saw it yesterday, and depending on when this show wraps up and I can have it set to upload and I can get up and grab a shower, I'm gonna go see it again. Holy shit, it was a good movie. So I'll leave it at that. We'll get into the news, and the first article we have up here is from IGN, written by Joe Scrabbles. The Nintendo dramatically over-delivered on the Switch supply. Reggie Phil M? I have no idea how to pronounce that. The Nintendo of America president. Um, <coughs> geez. Uh, overall, I mean, this is a, this is a story that just uh, that just keeps kicking me in the ass because I have said for the long again because I, I I said. When the Switch first was announced, this thing was not going to sell. And again, I'm I'm just I'm I'm getting proven wrong left, right, center. Either way, let's get into the article. Uh, the article reads: Despite widespread Switch shortages, Nintendo of American President Reggie Philaim, I think that's how that's pronounced, uh, has said the company dramat and I quote dramatically over delivered end quote on the console supply at launch. Speaking to Mashable, Philaim said that despite analyst predictions uh, that the Switch would sell far less, Nintendo provided 2 million units at launch. And I quote, We actually sold through almost 2.8 million units. He continues, So we dramatically over-delivered, and yet demand outpaces supply. End quote. The Switch has infam infamously been hard to find post-release, with surveys showing that the hybrid console interests more potential buyers than the PlayStation 4 Pro and the Xbox One X. Now, <coughs> Jesus. That I, I can understand that just because there's a lot of people like me who already have a PlayStation 4 and an Xbox One who are not super interested in up, in upgrading. I am going to upgrade. I'm going to upgrade. I'm not sure which one I'm going to do first. I, have, I play my PS4 more, so I'm thinking I'm going to get a Pro first, then get, an, then get a One X. I haven't, uh, haven't fully made that decision. But I, I, I can understand the Switch having a larger buyer base, if that's how that's said, um, than both the upgraded consoles. Now, what I'm interested is interested in is whether or not it has a higher potential buyer, whatever, than the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, just the, the console. Now, th that, that, that would probably be hard to find now because the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One have both been on the market for what? It's been four years now? I could be... No, it's, it, four years sounds about right. They, so they, they've been out for a while, and the Nintendo Switch is fairly new. So, nah, it would be hard to find that. Uh, let's keep going here. Uh, that comes alongside supply shortages of the, NE, of the NES and SNES classic micro consoles, both of which have had production upped recently. Philane believes uh, Nintendo is coming up with solutions to consumers' problems with the company's supply, just perhaps not as quickly as they hoped for. And I quote, I think if you were to go back and look at some of the comments about the supply on Nintendo products, you would actually see that the issue uh, have been resolved, but it's happening at a pace that is later than maybe uh, where the consumers would like to be. God damn, I can't. For some reason, my eyes are switching lines here while I'm trying to read here, where the commenters would like the resolution to be, but it happens and the solution is there. I'm just, I'm going to slow down. Sorry if I'm reading at a horrible pace. 
Villame explains that Nintendo on is at Nintendo's on track to ship the 10 million units of uh, of Switch. Of, I think there should be a. The, I'm sorry. I'm analyzing grammar. Jesus Christ. I am being super OCD right now. Of the Switch it hoped to within the console's first fiscal year. He has previously said the company is scaling up production to meet demand. He is hoping that there is uh, more than a few available on October 27th when Super Mario Odyssey and its accompanying Switch bundle is released. Um, I, I've said this every time I read a, how how the Switch is doing. I, I'm I'm really happy that it's doing well. I'm really happy that I was wrong. Not happy. How to put it? I'm not happy that it was wrong, but I'm happy that Nintendo's doing well with this console because I thought this was kind of a make or break kind of situation for Nintendo. That if they weren't able to do this, they were going to strictly be a handheld slash. Granted, I guess you could call the Switch a handheld, but you know what I mean. It was going to be like DS, and other than that, it's just going to be all nostalgia based. <coughs> so it is really nice to see. Um, the Switch doing well. Um, really, real quick though, October 27th, Jesus Christ, that day is going to be busy. Because what? We, sent, it, we already know, like this, it said that there is um, Super Mario Odyssey. We have Assassin's Creed Origins, Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus, all on that day. And there's a, a movie, I saw a preview for it yesterday. It looked really good. I can't remember what. What movie it was. It's also coming out on the 27th. And tons of stuff coming out that day. And what then we also have on the 10th of that month. We have um, Shadow of War. The uh, Middle Earth sequel. And sometime in that month I believe is South Park the Fractured But Whole. October is going to be awesome. I'm so glad we're almost there. Let's, uh, let's move on. Uh, the next article we have, also by IGN, also by Joe Scrabbles, is Red Dead Redemption 2 announcement coming next week. The article reads, Rockstar has announced that it is that it will release something related to Red Dead Redemption 2 next Thursday, September 28th at 8 a.m. Pacific Time, 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern Time, 4 p.m. UK, or 1 a.m. A- AEST on September 29th. The developer made, typ- made the typically cryptic announcement on Twitter using the Red Dead color scheme and font. It's a picture boom i'm not gonna i just yeah, yeah there you go there we go not gonna link that but yeah, that's you find it on twitter uh what the reveal might be is another matter we'd hazard a guess at a trailer that offers more of an idea of its story it would be much uh the same approach as gta 5 which was announced first with a mood trailer featuring its setting and followed up with a more specific plot material the much hyped return to america's Outlaw West was recently delayed to spring 2018. Rockstar says that it will tell, and and I quote, an epic tale of life in America's unforgiving heartland. The game's vast and atmospheric world will also provide the foundation for a brand new online multiplayer experience. End quote. Uh, Leaks have previously suggested that the game will be a prequel to the 2010 classic and that its map will include New Bordeaux, the setting of Mafia 3. You can rest assured that we'll have all that stuff that IGN usually ends their articles with. Um, okay, so if it's going to be a prequel, I'm going to... Wait a minute, though. Wasn't Red Dead Revolver a prequel to Red Dead Redemption? Or am I talking out of my ass there? If anybody can answer that question, tell me. Um, see, I, I probably am less excited for this game than other people are. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm I'm very excited. I, I, I will definitely play it when it comes out. I love Rockstar. I I was super excited for GTA 5, and they did not let me down for GTA 5. Um, But I've gone back and played Red Dead Redemption. People are probably going to hate me for saying this. I don't think that game holds up. It's it's just, it's so clunky. It's still a good game. It's just super clunky. It's really hard to play. Uh, But all in all, it's just, there's so much coming out in the interim between now and next year in spring of next year that I, I I won't have time to be pining for this game. <coughs> but overall I think this article says everything. I think it nails that this is probably gonna be a trailer. And and, and I I can't think of what else it would be unless it's somehow we're gonna announce DLC, but I don't know why you do that before a story trailer. Um but I but I would I would also guess with them that this is going to be a story trailer. Uh, my guess I, I'm not sure how much of the plot. I haven't really looked into this game too terribly much. 
at this time. But personally, I would guess that the story is going to be um, how John Marston had his falling out with his crew. Um, you know, because you, you had the whole... Um, it was one of the first pictures released was kind of this seven-man kind of team. God, for some reason, I want to see... I, 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 you know, there's a better picture of it. Uh, why, do, why does so much of me want to see something about the Magnificent Seven? Also, the, the new version of the Magnificent Seven movie? Pretty good. I'm going to check it out. God, I'm lazy. Moving on, this article coming to us by way of Eurogamer. Uh, Life is Strange Dev, Don't Nod's Vampire, delayed to 2018. So it has finally happened, guys. We have our first massive delay of the fall year. Although, I wait. was Rede No, Red Dead Redemption, I guess, was the first one. But... No, oh, well, I'm counting this as kind of the first big one that we get during the fall time. There we go. That's how I'll say that. Oh, let's see here. Uh, article by Tom Phillips. Article reads, Supernatural Adventure RPG Vampire will now launch in spring 2018. Developer Don't Nod has decided. It was previously down for release later this year on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. Don't Nod is, of course, the developer of the original Life is Strange and is now also working on a full sequel to the game separate to its current prequel miniseries Before the Storm. See, that answers another question I've been having. Because I, I, kept, I kept hearing Life is Strange is getting a sequel. And then, don't, and then Deck Nine released their prequel Before the Storm. And I have been so curious. Is that the sequel that we were promised? Because if so, I'm fine with it. I love what Deck Nine is doing with Before the Storm. Phenomenal, phenomenal game. Beats the. I'm, I'm not gonna say beats the crap out of the first one. As I've put it, the first game took about three episodes to really get really good. You know, in the writing and the performance and everything. I think Before the Storm starts at that point, and then is uh, hopefully it's gonna keep getting better whenever episodes two and three come out. But I can't wait. Um, I I really hope. Don't Nod uses the Unity engine that Deck Nine is using because um, I've gone back and played the original Life is Strange. I'm playing through it again right now, trying to get the platinum, and um, it it is the animation is a lot rougher than I remember. I still like the art style, but I like what it looks like on the Unity engine because I think it's still a little sharper. Uh, um, it looks really dull on because I think it was Unreal Two. Sorry, I'm, I've, I've totally gotten off the topic of Vampire, and now I'm talking Life is Strange. Uh, let's get back on this. Uh, on Vampire's Delay, Don't Nod Boss Oscar Gilbert uh, blamed it on a now-solved technical issue, uh, and I quote, Delaying the release of a project you hold dear is always a tough decision, end quote. Uh, Gilbert said, and I quote, However, we believe that meeting a deadline should never compromise quality. We were still convinced just a few weeks ago that we would be able to release Vampire this year. Unfortunately, a technical issue, now solved, has set our team's schedule back at the end of the development. Uh, the delay also... The delay allows us enough time for all the polishing and balancing phase, uh, much needed for a game of Vampire Scope, with the ambition... the ambitious semi-open world, its complex narrative, and deep RPG mechanics that give players a real impact on the world. We want to thank our publisher, Focus House Interactive, for giving us the means and time necessary for the, uh, to provide players a memorable experience, especially since uh, so many of you are eagerly, eagerly waiting this, uh, waiting for it. So. Um, I think this is a smart decision. Um, I Don't Nod don't nod's one of those are small development like, like they're a small studio, but they're a big name because you know. I mean, they've had Life is Strange. Uh, I didn't. I, I keep forgetting this. They also did that game Remember Me, which was an okay action game. Uh, it's it was just very forgettable. Ironic that it was called Remember Me. But I think it's good for a studio like Don't Nod that I don't that I don't think would get. I, I don't want to say benefit of the doubt, but it it can't do what a lot of these giant studios can do, where they can like, well, here's the game, and we're gonna fix it as we go. No, I think that would hurt the game more for a smaller studio like Don't Nod. Or, not smaller, but I, I can't find the word that I'm looking for here. Um, they, aren't, they aren't one of the, like, the massive, like, a Ubisoft or a Bioware, one of those. Like, they would release a game, you know, they would stick to their, e even if something like this would happen, they'd stick to, probably stick to their release schedule, which I, I like because then I don't have to wait, but I also don't like because I have a game that's not necessarily broken, but it's not what it should be. So... Eh, I, I, e either way, sorry, I'm, I'm tangenting. I, I really like what Don't Nod's doing here. 
I'm very excited for this game. I, I really like the concept. I'm not sure if it's going to be fo if it's going to play on the world of darkness. I doubt it because everything that I'm hearing, the names are different and the words are different. Um, the world of darkness being the world, uh, I think White Wolf Publishing. I think the tabletop role playing books, um, Vampire the Masquerade, stuff like that. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> You know, I have that game on... I, I have, I, wait, do, do I have it? I think I have that game on my Steam library. I just haven't put it on my computer and haven't had a chance to play it. It's Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. Oh, God, man, my backlog is extremely busy right now. Um, but yeah, final thoughts on this. Um, it's sad to see it set back to 2018. Um, it really means that I have less to play in November. But <laughs> I understand why, and I'm glad that they're taking the time to make sure the game is uh, what it needs to be. Uh, moving on, Player Unknown's Battleground dev contemplating action over similar Fortnite Battle Royale mode. Article by Joe Scrubbles of IGN. Uh, before we really get into and reading this article, I just want to say I thought this was going to happen. I, I I was sitting here as soon as I saw that, uh, that Fortnite. Uh, I'm not even 100% sure what Fortnite is. I've seen it. It's I think it's free on PSN. I... I not sure about on Xbox One, but I've seen it, and I'm not 100% sure what the game is. It seems kind of like a zombie game, but also a... I, I'm not 100% sure, but either way, they, they announced this kind of like Battle Royale mode, and I'm sitting here going, this looks a lot like PUBG, so I it wouldn't... Um, I don't know. It just, it just seemed off. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the article reads, Blue Hole, the development studio behind Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, uh, has said it is concerned by how familiar Fortnite's recently announced Battle Royale mode is to its game and is contemplating further action. In a press release, Blue Hole Vice President Chang Han Kim, um, hopefully that's correct, uh, explained the connection between his company and Fortnite's developer Epic, as well as his issue with the extremely similar mode. And I quote... We've had an ongoing relationship with Epic Games throughout PUBG's development, and they are the creators of the UE4, the engine we license for the game. After listening to the growing feedback from our community and reviewing the gameplay for ourselves, we are concerned that Fortnite may be replicating the experience from which uh, PUBG is known. We have also noted, noticed that Epic Games references PUBG in the promotion of Fortnite to their community and in communications with the press. This was never discussed uh, with us, and we feel, and we don't feel that it's right. The PUBG community has and continues to provide evidence of the many similarities as we contemplate further action. End quote. Uh, the press release goes on to cite Fortnite's user interface UI, gameplay, and structure uh, replication in the Battle Royale mode as it causes um, as it causes for concern. Battlegrounds offers 100 player death matches in an 8 uh, by 8 kilometer map. Fortnite's take is practically identical with the addition of crafting and environmental destruction. We called the latter's new mode eerily similar to PUBG and said it was missing a plethora of quality of life features. We did, however, enjoy the potential of its crafting mechanics. Player Unknown himself, Brendan Green, had previously used a Reddit AMA to give his opinion on the game, including a take on his incredibly successful project. Other com and I quote, Other companies will, of course, enter the marketplace, but I would just hope that they put their own spin on the game mode and not just make a carbon copy. End quote. Aside from Fortnite's new free-to-play mode, GTA Online recently added a Battle Royale activity to its Smuggler Run update. While a new game, Project X, aims to allow for over 400 player battle royale matches holy shit there's a good reason for that PUBG has amassed over 10 million sales in early access alone breaking steam records for a highest concurrent player count as it did so um, my stance is I think blue hole has a case from everything that I've seen of this uh, Fortnite battle royale mode it does seem almost identical it does seem like that guy said um, Brandon Green said a yeah, carbon copy this it, it, it's one of those that I would not be surprised to see a legal, you know, legal action taken, and it wouldn't surprise me if Blue Hole won. I'm not going to take sides here because I don't think that this is a frivolous lawsuit. I think this is an understandable and justifiable lawsuit. I think some people are saying that there's kind of a weird kind of uh, like right here. There's another article that came out today. PUBG publicly shaming Fortnite is a terrible PR move. See, I don't think they're publicly shaming. I think they're just saying, look, this is very similar to our concept and we don't like it. 
I don't mind that. And I think that they are well within their rights to sue. I mean, it's just like all of these uh, MOBAs that I keep seeing popping up that I keep looking at it and going, this is the same art style and looks like the exact same concept as League of Legends. Now, I guess you could also say, isn't Dota also very much like League, League of Legends? I'm not sure which one came first, but there, I, I've played both. I've, I'm not a, as big a fan of Dota as I like League. Um, so I think, I think they're just different enough. But this one, eh, other than art style and the crafting, it really does seem like the same game. So I, I, I can understand, I can understand the, uh, the problems. Uh, now moving on, I'm not going to talk a whole hell of a lot before we watch this. I'll talk after. I'm just, this, uh, the trailer for the upcoming Tomb Raider movie. Holy shit. What's your name? Lara. Sunny? Croft? Lara, your father's gone. You can pick up where he left off. I see so much of him in you. Brilliant. Hello, Sprout. If you're listening to this, then I must be dead. I found something, a tomb called the Mother of Death. If Trinity succeeds, our world is in danger. Promise me you will stop them. I promise. I think I know where my dad went. That's right in the middle of the Devil's Sea. It will be an adventure. Death is not an adventure. I just want to throw this out here real quick. I, I hate pausing in the middle of these. Isn't this a direct shot from the first Tomb Raider game? I mean, this is almost like a recreation, a very well done one, too, if I might add. You shouldn't have come here. <laughs> but I'm glad that you did. What do you know about my father? Now I see the likeness, the recklessness. Close the tomb once and for all. The fate of humanity is now in your hands. Can't be too careful these days. The world has gone bloody mad. I'll take two. Love it. Uh, I, I, I've... Where to start? I, holy shit. First, I want to say I really like the actress that they picked. I don't know much about Alicia Vikander, but I will say I really, really love um, the look, that, how, what they're going with here. I, I really love the look of the film. The actress, I, I think she's she's a lot more of a... Uh, she looks a lot more like what I think like Laura Croft than uh, Angelina Jolie did. Wait, was that... Yeah, she did the first couple Tomb Raider movies, you know, those. Uh, uh, but I, I, I really think this could be our first really big video game movie crossover that could be really good. Although I don't think it's a crossover. I, I, I don't think this is going to... I mean, how to put this? I, this is obviously based off of the new games. If you look at the costume design, they're going into the... It's... it's it, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm making like three points at once here. I'll try and separate them out. The story itself kind of looks like a mix between Tomb Raider and Rise of the Tomb Raider because they're introducing Trinity and all this, but Trinity wasn't introduced until the second game, but this seems like it's kind of on an, an island um, and everything re a lot more reminiscent of the first game. Uh, her costume, outfit, whatever you want to call it, much more reminiscent of the first game. Uh... I, I think that I also I think that is the right way to go with this. I think focusing on the video the new video games because I think the new video games were so much less cartoonish. I, I, a lot of people weren't big fans of the story in the first one. I actually I, I enjoyed it. 
uh, and I really enjoyed Rise of the Tomb Raider, and I can't wait to see what they're going to do, because there's, there's going to be one more. I, th- I think they were planning on a trilogy. Um, like I said, I, I, can't, I can't keep any of these thoughts straight here. Overall, awesome trailer, awesome looking movie. Can't wait for it. Uh, I don't think we have a release date as of yet. If anybody knows, please feel free to put it in the comments, and I will correct myself. But movie looks great. That trailer was awesome. Can't wait to see uh, more from it. Um, you know, actually, I, I don't think I was as how to put this as um, excited for this until I saw this. And I saw this trailer and went, "Yep, yep, I'm ready for it." Uh, final article. Uh, a couple days ago, there was a twenty first. So okay, two days. Yeah, a couple days ago, there was a bunch of articles coming out uh, about. Uh, Obsidian Entertainment, the people who did Fallout New Vegas. Uh, there were there were two others that I wanted to talk about, but I had some other stuff, and I just didn't want the show to run on too obnoxiously long. Um, but either way, I, I'd suggest going to IGN. There's some really good articles. This one by Alex Osborne. Uh, the title, Fallout New Vegas Dev, would certainly love to make more Fallout, which if I might say, thank God I love New Vegas. New Vegas is my personal favorite of all the modern Fallouts. Um, I haven't really played some of the old ones, but of the modern Fallouts, that being 3, New Vegas, and 4, uh, Fallout New Vegas I thought was was my favorite in terms of story. I like the RPG elements to it. Uh, it fixed the shooting problems that I had with 3. 4, I th- had the best shooting, but I think story and everything was weaker than New Vegas. That's how I'll put that. So I would, I would love to see them do another Fallout. Let's see here. Uh, the article reads, Fallout New Vegas director Josh Sawyer spoke to the possibility of Obsidian Entertainment making another Fallout game, saying that given the opportunity, the studio would love to work on another entry in Bethesda's post-apocalyptic franchise. And I quote, I would certainly love to work on a Fallout game again, Sawyer said on the latest episode of IGN Expert Mode. I... Was here. Uh, I know there are tons of people at Obsidian who would love to work on a Fallout game again. If we were given the chance, we would certainly love to. Even though he's currently working on projects that aren't related to Bethesda's open-world franchise, Sawyer said he gets, and I quote, more questions about Fallout than anything else. Noting the question as to whether or not Obsidian will return to the franchise is something people ask all the time. IGN's review of the game. I'll also be sure to check out this week's full blah, 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 blah. Um, Again, all all I can say is, dear God, I hope so. I would love to see them do another Fallout game. Um, I, I, I think... They took, uh, I, jeez, where to, again, where to start with Fallout New Vegas? New Vegas, I just, again, story was good. I love the world. I love the gameplay. Uh, I think they found a great way to mesh everything together. I think Fallout 4 was a little clunky. I think my score on that game was an 8 out of 10. It's good. I would suggest it. It's a lot of fun. It's a great open world game. It's a good RPG. Um, I think, but I think the shooting was a standout. Um, I, but I, I think that was its standout. Um, I just think everything else was okay. Um, so, yeah, I don't really have any other thoughts. That's kind of the end of the show today, guys. Uh, real quick, if I might throw out a recommendation just because it's right here. Divinity, Divinity Original Sin 2. Holy shit, it's a good game. Holy shit, it's a good game. Playing right now, loving the crap out of it. I love it. I love it. The, the combat, how it's... It, it's distance based in the AP. It's it's, jeez, uh, I, I might do a let's play of that sometime when I have free time. You know when that actually happens. Ha. Um, but yeah, <coughs> sorry. Definite suggestion. Divinity Original Sin two. Go check it out. Um, but like I said, that's the end of the show this week, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, you can find me over on Facebook, Twitter, the website, Minds.com. Links, all that stuff is down in the description below. Remember to like, comment. If you're not already, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, like I said earlier, there are links to every article that I talked about, as well as the trailer that I showed down in the description below. And other than that, thank you for watching, everybody. And until next time, I'm AJ Gels. This is the Elm Gaming Channel. I'm out.